Hi, I'm Josh Carvin. Welcome to another Death Battle Prediction video. But first, a uh, little heads up. I am a little bit sick. Uh, I've been for a couple weeks now. Um, so if I start breaking out into coughing fits of dying, that's why. Uh, next, though, Pit versus Sora. That was actually a very good death battle in terms of, uh, like, the animation. Um, I thought they could have done a lot more. Both characters just have such expansive move sets that I, I really feel like they could have hit a couple more notes with that one. Um, I'm also sad that there was no balloons. Um, the stats, they did lowball both of them, but I'm honestly surprised that they even gave a Sora FTL at all. Um, th whereas normally he's like hugely FTL, I think it's like 400 times it or something. Um, so, really, there's not too much to go over. They they did lightning scaling, and interestingly enough, they did make the discerning between magic lightning and uh, natural lightning, which I don't think we've actually heard them go over at all before. Uh, so I'm kind of impressed on that front. Um, <clears throat> they went into a lot of the weapons, which I'm pretty glad about. Uh, I see so many people getting butt hurt that they didn't include the drive forms. They're not even stronger or anything. They're just a method of having different game mechanics for the most part. Um, other than that, though, there's not really too much to say. It was a good death battle. Um, so on to the next one, which I'm very excited for. Uh, so Frank West versus Leon Kennedy. Um, I was pretty excited when I first heard this fight announced, as I really like both series. Even better, it's actually in this weird space for a match where it's actually debatable. It's the closest fight of the season so far, and close enough that as long as ScrewAttack explains well enough, they can't be considered wrong. Um, this may seem a bit much to most people to say that it's that close, because I've seen people argue either way, um, so we're going to break it down a little bit. Uh, first, we start off where all good versus debates should, with the stats. Uh, we'll start off with speed. Uh, Leon is definitely faster than Frank. He has more speed feats, as well as being a bit better than Frank's, uh, even if not necessarily calculably so. Uh, such as simply avoiding gunfire from more people. Like, uh, I remember in Dead Rising 1, he evades fire from uh, Carlito... Several times, actually, he dodges handgun fire, and he dodges gunfire from a P90. But F Leon, on the other hand, he has a moment where he kind of evades through a few people who are firing automatic weapons at him. So it's not calculable how much faster he's being, but it is a bit faster. <coughs> Sorry. Next, strength. Uh, I firmly believe that Frank holds the advantage here. Um, if his exosuit is included. Uh, first thing that should be addressed more so is Leon's best strength feat. Uh, many people would point towards him holding back uh, the head of Simmons for a second, or I think it was like three seconds or something, uh, when Simmons in Resident Evil 6 can flip a train. Um, so a lot of people would argue that it scales, that Leon has that strength for being able to hold back Simmons where it doesn't quite work like that. The feet isn't quite there. Um, the way it actually works is that Leon dodged the initial lunge and only held back Simmons' head as it tried to munch on him. Uh, I think it should go without saying that holding back a head when something's trying to get at you is not equivalent to holding back a charge. To give an example, it's like a bull standing totally still, but just trying to gore you with its neck muscles alone. Sure, you you could still get hurt by it, um, but is the force hitting you with anywhere close to what would be kind of have coming your way with a full sprinting charge? Definitely not. Um, as well, the flank the the train flipping feat is later in the boss fight after Simmons undergoes a mutation to gain the blade like appendage that he uses to hit the train. And keep in mind, a good portion of how Leon typically beats anything above his weight class is usually liberal abuse to weak spots and getting help. Uh, meanwhile, the exosuits have quite prominent strength feats. Um, in the form of ripping up traffic sections with massive boulders of concrete and knocking around military vehicles like Humvees. 
Now, Humvees are armored vehicles. They are Jeeps, and at the lowest, they usually weigh around 10,000 pounds, and the specific one that is in Dead Rising 4, as close as I could find anyway, uh, weighs about one, sorry, 12,000 pounds. This really puts Frank in a huge advantage in terms of strength. Um, next comes durability, which for the most part is a bit more of a toss-up. Frank has his feat of taking a complete thrashing from Calder. Calder is a zombie lord uh, who retained his intelligence in Dead Rising 4, and he is also wearing an exosuit. So that feat we just mentioned where uh, the exosuits are capable of throwing around 12,000 pounds, give that to Calder. That's exactly how strong he should be in an exosuit, because they're the same ones. So, Frank, without an exosuit, is capable of taking a beating from Calder. But, that said, Leon survives other things as well, such as trees being swung at him, boulders hitting him, getting huge distance wax into, like, pillars and such, and things like that. Honestly, the main thing that I've noticed here is Leon is unlucky that in games he always seems to just dodge being hit by anything crazy big, or this category would be his in spades. For example, uh, Simmons does a charge later in the boss fight, and it knocks Leon back, but it didn't actually hit him. Only the impact of Simmons landing on the ground made him tumble back. If he took a few more straight-on attacks in the game and didn't get one-shotted so often by, um, uh, like, failing quick-time events, then he would have taken this category really well. But as it stands, this one's kind of a tie, as both of them are kind of in a similar space there. Uh, for skill and experience, not even going to pretend that there's a debate here. Leon, the guy with 15 years of active experience and seven known major incidents between the CG movies and games, um, versus the guy with about three incidents over the same amount of time and a major implication that he did fuck up all in between combat in that time. As in, with Frank, he usually runs like shows and things like that during the time between games. So he only actually has the combat experience that he gained in those games. In Dead Rising 1, when uh, you first fight Carlito, I think it's Brad, if I recall? Um, Brad questions him, you ever shot a human before? You ever shot someone before? And Frank replies... He's never shot a person before. So his combat experience is vastly lower than Leon's. So that's kind of Leon's main advantage that he has in this fight, is just how much more skilled and experienced he is. Um, so then we come to intelligence. And if you'll notice, we're actually going into some of those weird stats that I usually argue don't quite matter, because here they actually do. Because of the fact that Leon has a bit of an advantage in, in uh, speed, uh, Frank has a bit of a, an advantage in strength, and they're both pretty similar for durability, we actually have to start getting into a few things like uh, intelligence and stamina. I'll clear it up right away. Frank is vastly better in stamina, not that that one should be very relevant. He did fight for three full days straight with zero rest. Leon doesn't quite match up to that. Um, anyway, back to intelligence. Uh, I wouldn't be inclined to say Leon has a more traditionally smart mindset and remains strategic and calm in battle, uh, but there's something to be said for the sheer mad scientisting that Frank can do. In addition, in battle, Frank is much more inclined to use trap setting and planning than Leon usually is. In fact, in Dead Rising 4, Frank even has a full inventory slot dedicated to traps. So I'm inclined to say Frank because it's more relevant to the fight, but I will put this one as a tie because the two use very different types of intellect in combat, and ones that are kind of incomparable. Um, as it stands, right now, Leon would probably beat Frank because of his experience and skill and speed over just Frank's strength. But, that said, we now come to the whole reason why this fight is actually debatable, and the very focus of Dead Rising itself, which is the weaponry. Let's be frank here, Leon does not have all that much in terms of weaponry over Frank. 
pretty much he has a large number of guns. He has shotguns, pistols. Uh, if you really want to get into it, to the Chicago typewriter, but that would open up a can of worms that I'm not sure you, they'd want to, because the Chicago typewriter, which uh, for those who don't know, is a Thompson submachine gun that does not require reloading and has infinite ammo. Never stop shooting. But that requires beating the game and then I think having some other uh, requirements as well. So it's not necessarily something that you would actually have in game when you go through your games. Um, so he does have some fairly powerful weapons like a sniper rifle, a uh, pretty strong handgun. Sorry. Um, and pretty much any weapon that Leon has, Frank has the exact same one, and then a crazy stupid version of it. Um, that said, I don't think things like the Paddle Saw or the Defiler or anything like that is really worth mentioning too much right now, because Frank has a lot of weapons that bring out that secret fourth part of the stat trinity, which is Hacks. You'd be surprised, because these seem like such human characters, you wouldn't expect hacks to really come into play here. But Frank has a massive number of weapons that are exceptionally powerful, wacky, unpredictable, most of all outright game-ending. The Magic Wand from Dead Rising 4, which is a standard combo weapon, nothing unlockable, he can make it with a stick and some chemicals. It's all he needs. And it is a literal transmutation weapon. It can turn whatever he hits into candy canes or gingerbread men. There's a very big Christmas theme with that one. Or big thing of presents. Leon doesn't have transmutation resistance. So if he gets hit by the magic wand, fight's done. Right there. Uh, that said, you also have weapons like the Ice Sword, which is a uh, blade with nitroglycerin that when you swing, it makes like about a five-foot wave, shockwave thing of freezing that immediately freezes zombies. Again, Leon gets hit by that, he's probably done. And the power attack is an even bigger shockwave. Um, there are tons of other ice weapons as well, such as the grenades and some trap Santas that you can set up. Uh, the Suckmaster 9000 makes a tornado that sucks enemies off their feet into a grinding turbine. The Electric Axe is a massive electrical AoE, and the Umbrella Gun is a literal death ray. Actually, it would be pretty fitting if Leon died to a weapon called the Umbrella Gun. I think that would actually be a pretty funny way to end the fight off. Um, going further into this, the Exosuit, with some of the powers like the Ice One, can make a literal tornado of icy winds that freeze the enemy solid. Um, Add in various juices that he can drink throughout the games for effects such as 10 seconds of invincibility and I think a minute of triple running speed. Though it doesn't affect his combat speed, that should be clarified as well. <coughs> and at that point, he, it's an even more major advantage. Overall, in terms of arsenal, Frank absolutely crushes in this category. So we come to the end and... I'm kind of still humming and hawing about this fight. To be honest, if you gave Frank, say, the Magic Wand, Ice Sword, Invulnerability Juice, Suckmaster 9000, Umbrella Gun, and the Ice Exosuit, so six weapons, I would be inclined to say that Frank actually crushes Leon pretty soundly, um, but I doubt we're actually going to see that. Frank can bring 12 items into the fight, that much is true. But I highly doubt they're actually going to give Frank all of his best stuff. And I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Um, as it feels like gimping the character. It's like, I almost feel like they're only going to give Frank whatever makes for a close fight, which takes away from the advantage that Leon, that Frank has in Arsenal. Um, most of the fight for me comes down to what they give him, and if they give him the goods, he should be able to pull a win against the relatively mundane kit that they that uh, Leon has. The idea that Leon crushes in melee or at long range are a bit weird when Frank has numerous weapons for just such purposes. The umbrella gun is a literal beam, and unlike the beam hallway that he was very famous for dodging, 
Um, it's not a predictable path that it goes through. Um, and Frank can kind of just swing the beam how he likes to hit him. Um, or he can just throw in a Suckmaster 9000. Uh, then comes melee range. Yes, Leon's speed advantage means he should be able to evade Frank's blows, but really Leon's experience advantage means very little when Frank can wave a wand and just suddenly you're a gingerbread man. Or perhaps he swings a sword at Leon. Leon has faced people with swords. He can certainly dodge that attack, absolutely. But what Leon simply does not know... They're not coming for me, I swear, if you heard the siren there. Um... But he swings the sword, and what Leon would not know is that that sword just sent liquid nitrogen through the air, and he's now, like, a completely frozen person and open to anything else to finish off the fight. Part of what keeps Frank in this fight is the sheer unpredictability of his potential kit. But I say exactly that. Potential. If they send in Frank with a baseball bat and a camera, he's fucked. Outright. I think then, in the spirit of representing a character at their maximum, I think Frank has this. Uh, and as a good little thought, uh, how funny is it that both of their best showings are from Dead Rising 4 and Resident Evil 6, the two games that people fucking hate? Um, either way, it looks like, depending on what Frank's given, Leon's will met his match. I'm predicting the underdog victory, as it seems, of Frank West. And that's all I'm going to say on this one, um, so I will see you guys after the next one.